The Raspberry Pi single board computers are a great starting point for anyone wanting to get involved with machine vision research. This can open the door to electronic projects that can track motion, recognize characters, or simply light up an LED when a certain object is in view. But before we can delve into the software, we need to make sure that our hardware is in working order. Luckily the Raspberry Pi camera, and those like it, work well with the Raspberry Pi itself with just a little configuration. Welcome to Unboxing Tomorrow, where we discuss electronics, robotics, IoT, communication systems, and more recently, machine vision. That last one has been an ongoing project around here, briefly showing up on our social media pages, but without a whole lot of guidance on exactly what it was doing. We'll get to that later, but for now, our objectives are fairly simple. Unboxing the Raspberry Pi camera, attaching the camera without damaging anything, and checking whether we can capture still images and video. If you already have that working, feel free to skip ahead, but consider dropping a like first. This helps out our channel, but more importantly, it helps me track what topics people are interested in. In an earlier video, we configured a brand new Raspberry Pi 4 to run the Raspberry Pi operating system. In my case, that also involved configuring the Raspberry Pi 4 to work with Windows Remote Desktop, but you can also attach an HDMI monitor to it. If you don't already have a Raspberry Pi with the working operating system on it, I recommend following that video first, because this one will pick up where that one left off. You'll know you're ready for this video when you have a Raspberry Pi, preferably a version 3 or 4, a Raspberry Pi 1 or 2 camera, or something compatible such as the Arducam, a working image of Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian, an internet connection, the faster the better, a 5 volt power supply, and as always, an anti-static workspace. The camera ships in with the required cable and its own anti-static packaging. You should probably ground yourself before removing it from the package, or at the very least, handle it by the edges. The tape covering the lens is semi-transparent to the point that we can actually film through it, so there's no immediate need to remove it. Like the Raspberry Pi itself, the camera has four mounting holes that are made to fit the metric M2 screw size. To attach it, you'll need to locate the connector on the Raspberry Pi itself that's marked Camera. When you insert the ribbon, you'll want to make sure that the metallic contacts of the ribbon are facing the HDMI connector. To insert it, you'll need to grab the black locking tab on both sides and then gently lift up on it. When you've done so, you'll see a gap that you can slide the ribbon into, and then you need to lock that latching tab back into place by pushing down on the ribbon until its metal contacts are barely visible. Power on the Raspberry Pi and open up the terminal. Recall from part 1 that this is basically a fresh copy of the Raspberry Pi operating system and we haven't updated anything. Type in sudo apt-get update followed by sudo apt-get upgrade. Use the Y button to confirm your upgrade and be prepared to wait for several minutes while the latest software is installed. When it's done, it's time to configure the system to use a better password to recognize the camera itself and to optionally expand the file system. This final step will basically maximize your storage using the microSD card. Back in the terminal, type in sudo raspi config. You can also find a copy of all these commands in the video description. If you're still using that old default password of pi and raspberry, it's a good idea to change it now, so simply go to change user password. Follow the on-screen commands, and once your new password is in play, you'll go back to the original menu. Next, we need to enable the camera itself. To do this, go to Interfacing Options, Camera, and then Enable. Once again, you'll go back to the main menu. And finally, we have that optional step of expanding the file system. So go to Advanced Options, then Expand File System. Finally, we can reboot the system by either using the down arrow key or by pressing the right arrow key to go to Finish. Give the system a minute or two, and when you're back at the desktop, Reopen the terminal. Now, before we start snapping photographs, I should note that my camera still has its protective tape attached, so expect better image quality from your own cameras when you remove the tape. Inside the terminal, you want to type in raspi still dash lowercase o single frame dot jpeg, keeping in mind that just about everything in Linux is case sensitive. After just a short delay, you should be able to open up the file manager and find a file named singleframe.jpg. If you double click it, you'll see a snapshot of whatever was in front of the camera. This proves that not only was the hardware working, but we also have the requisite software. From the terminal, the Raspberry Pi still application will 
by default, save your images to whatever part of your directory structure you're looking at at the moment. In the terminal, you can find out what directory that is by typing in pwd, which is short for print working directory. To get an idea of what else Raspi still is capable of, you can simply type in its name with no other parameters, and you'll get a fairly comprehensive help report. To cover one of the commands that's most important now, we can type in raspi still dash o rotated frame dot jpeg dash rot nine zero. This will create a new snapshot, this time rotate it 90 degrees, and we can describe this as a clockwise turn, but we can also notice that this did not change the aspect ratio from 4 to 3 to 3 to 4. The application will accept any positive integer, ranging from 0 to 359, but in practice, it's only effective in 90 degree increments. If you enter something other than 0, 90, 180, or 270, then your entry will be reduced until it matches one of those four values. In other words, values from 0 to 89 will result in no rotation at all, values 90 to 179 will result in 90 degrees of rotation, and so on. As a second option, we can also mirror the image. So for example, we can type in raspi still dash o mirrored frame dot jpeg dash hf, where hf is short for horizontal flip. Likewise, we can do a vertical flip with dash VF. And for good measure, it is possible to do rotations and mirroring at the same time. Now it's time to record actual video. We can do this using a similar application called RaspiVid. RaspiVid, or RaspiVid, whichever you prefer, can also accept the exact same commands for rotations and mirroring as before. To record 5 seconds of video, we can go back to the terminal and type in RaspiVid dash o video test dot h264 dash t space 5000. In this case, the 5000 refers to the recording duration in milliseconds. Go back to the file manager and you should see the resulting video. If you installed the full version of the Raspberry Pi operating system, then you should already have an application called VLC Media Player that will play the video just by double clicking it. This video uses the H264 codec and if you prefer MPEG-4 or MP4 for short, you can easily convert your video by going back to the terminal and typing in sudo apt-get install gpack. When it's done, type in mp4box-add video test dot h264 video test dot mp4. This will create a mp4 version of the original and once again you can use VLC Media Player to view it. Like before, you can simply type in the name raspivid to get a full list of its capabilities, and you can even type in raspi still v to retrieve a few details about your camera. Finally, it's worth noting that the camera by default will automatically adjust for things like lighting conditions. The camera itself uses a rolling shutter, which will produce some bizarre and distorted images of anything moving at high speeds. To my knowledge, there's no way to completely remove this effect, but it might be possible to mitigate it. And of course there are also other options available, such as the Ardu cam that I've used with this Raspberry Pi 3B+. Apparently these cameras support every model of Raspberry Pi going as far back as Raspberry Pi 1. The official website says it will be supported until at least 2024, which is nice to know in advance. If you find this sort of thing useful, be sure to like the video, and consider joining us on social media or on Patreon. The monthly poll for August 2020 basically wants to know if videos like this one would be helpful in other languages. It also covers lessons learned on technical builds like this one, and given the numerous errors I encountered while installing machine vision modules, it's going to be a very busy month. Stay tuned for details on that project, and as always, have a great day.